Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another video here at Underdeveloped. And today we have a review for you. We are reviewing the movie Babylon, directed by the incomparable Damien Chazelle. His first movie that was a big hit, his first feature was, you heard about it, it was Whiplash that won J.K. Simmons his, his Oscar. He went on to La La Land, which was a huge movie for the time. Um, got nominated for a bunch of Oscars. And in addition to that, he also did First Man, I think, um, which is another Ryan Gosling movie. But that wasn't as big um, as the others, but I heard it was a decent movie. It was okay. Are you, are you, are you, uh, that's, that's the name of the movie you actually watched? Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, and now you have Babylon. Yeah, Babylon. Um, yep. And this movie stars Margot Robbie, um, Diego Calva. The, those are the two pretty much main people. Brad Pitt kind of comes in. Uh, Phoebe Tonkin, Olivia Wilde, Samara Weaving... Max Minghella, Olivia Hamilton, uh, Chloe Fineman, Catherine Waterston, Lee John Lee, um, Spike Jones. That's pretty much. It. There's a lot more other people, but but these, but these like the main people. Oh, yeah. and of course, Gene Smart. She was the editor or the reviewer. Mm -hmm. was. Yeah, and those pretty much are the, the key people in this movie. It's very much a, an ensemble piece. Yeah. Lots of characters roaming around doing yeah. shit. It's a big movie. It's a big. <laughs> it's movies. It's grandeur. It's you know it's roaring. It's roaring twenties. Yeah. It's, well, you know, it, it starts in the roaring twenties. It starts least. starting in the roaring twenties, but that's the vibe it has for me. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of the Great Gatsby, which um, he was Tobey Maguire was mm -hmm. also in. He was. Uh, it's definitely the vibes, the decadence, and but unlike the, the Great Gatsby, is, he's barely in this movie. Yeah, 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 because yeah, he was like the main character in that. He was like, the main character. Uh, yeah. Decadence, and I like it. I thought it was the main character was uh, was was Leo, but no. actually, actually, I mean, but like, he's a title character, and he is one of the main characters. But Tobey Maguire's actually yeah. like the number one. Well, that's because the book was. Yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 that's before I knew what Great Gatsby really was. Mm -hmm. But that's Scott Fitzgerald wrote that one. Yeah. But anyways, um, yeah, so like. Yeah, this movie is definitely decadence and depravity in the early <laughs> years of basically the lives of um of silent film stars. And mm -hmm. they all basically much tackle... So people see the rise and fall of film stars as they transition into the sound era, you know, as they think they want to make new waves and break new ground. It really is just killing their career because they realize that, like, every star fades, you know what I mean? <laughs> just, just, yeah. just like real stars, they, they fade eventually and die, you know what I mean? That and they and, and especially Brad Pitt's character, like they basically dealing with like basically like falling from grace, you know? It was at the top and then now they're not and they're declining. And one of the main characters, Manny, he also he, he starts off like he is in the opposite opposite direction. He starts off like as like just like doing like he's shoving shit and whatever else and working for like, you know what I mean, like these luxurious parties, all these stars, and he gets the he gains the trust of Brad Pitt's character, who is a, a sound who is a current silent film star. And then he becomes like assistant, and then he moves up the ranks, and he becomes a director in his own right. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, where's the black guy, by the way? Like, um, fucking. Yeah, where's the guy who plays? I Sydney? say black guy because he's the only black guy really. There is he right. is. Uh, yeah, Juan Jovan. Yeah, Jovan. Why is he so low? He's one of the main characters. Yeah, he's what he's in way more scenes than a lot of the people. Oh like, yeah, like what the fuck? Like he had a, he had a whole arc in his movie. McGuire's in this as well, but Tony McGuire plays basically this uh, gangster Margot Robbie's character owes money to, and her character goes more into like drugs and gambling and crazy shit like that. She gets into deep shit, and they have to pay Tony McGuire's uh, Tony, Tony, Tony McGuire off essentially. And he actually was kind of scary, so he's like he's like he's very weird, like mm -hmm. he's weird and scary, but not in like a like oh like he's posing, but more like this guy seems like erratic. He may <laughs> he may he may do, and he has a lot of muscle with him, so yeah. You know, so I thought he played it. What he played it off well. I miss Toby, man. I miss seeing him and things. All right. So, what do you think about this movie? Overall, like this movie is very much like its opening sequence. The fact that it's crazy, it's wild, it's chaotic. There's a whole bunch of shit happening, and it's just a beautiful mess. It is. It's, it's, it, it's like a beautiful jumbled mess, but in a, in, in a good way. I feel like. The, yeah, the, mostly the, good. The movie was pure. It was scenes in this movie straight that was just pure chaos. Like, yeah. it, was, it, was like, it was like, it was basically these one takes and a lot of shit is going on within these scenes and it keeps like, and it's almost like an orchestra and, and like the composers like, and Damien Chazelle is the composer and he's like raising intensity, <laughs> no, higher, 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 kind of like Whiplash, <laughs> like with the fucking, with, with, the, with the instructor. Um, J.K. Simmons like, higher, higher, higher. You know what I mean? Like, and that's kind of, and it just gets more bonkers and, and the music is supposed to play well, orchestra music too and you're hearing like mm -hmm. the music get louder and shit like that. It's like, you know, it's, like it's, it's like, it's really nuts. Like, uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's great though. It's fantastic, you know? And the acting was great. I mean, Brad Pitt yeah. did a good job. Toby did a good job for the mid scenes he was Diego Calvin. I'm not sure who he is. I, I, I don't know if I've seen him anything, but he was awesome as a lead. He showed a lot of lead character machismo. Okay, let's see what um, they say about Babylon in here. Uh, Babylon's overwhelming muchness is exhausting. 
but much like the industry, it honors its well acted, well crafted glitz and glamour can be often an effective distraction, which it was. Um, Babylon has entertaining moments, and its ambition is impressive, but the movie's chaotic and this and disjointed execution makes it difficult to really enjoy. Okay, I agree with that somewhat. Yeah, I can see. I can see like this is the kind of movie where I can see why a lot of people wouldn't like it, but. For all, but that being said, I do think it's overall just a good movie. I wouldn't give it anything near this low. Yeah, fifty five percent. I think is a little greasy. Like, well, I do like most of plot plot arcs in this movie. There is one thing I just never really was that into, which is unfortunately a huge part of this movie. Where Manny has a big character on uh, on uh, what's her face, fucking Margot Robbie's character. Like he, like he, pretty much like it's pretty much a love at first sight kind of story. Where they kind of get to know each other during the first night. I don't know, maybe they know each other for like eight hours, but then they just like kind of fall in love. They barely see each other for a couple of years, but then as her career starts falling, he's like going off and saving her, which I mean I mean it was cool it was kind of cool at first, but as it gone like I'm not really a huge fan of love at first sight and just the complete extreme lengths he goes for. It just kind of got less interesting near the end of the movie, like around that third hour. I was like, hmm. I uh I agree with it, but not to that extent. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the way I see this is that it was a big deviation from his character arc. Um, like we see him achieving his dream, and it seems highly unlikely that he will throw it away and risk all in line and put himself in harm's way. You know, what I mean, just to save Margot Robbie from her gambling debt. And on top of that, like, oh, so I know you're in love with her, but I'm like, damn, to that extent, brother, it's like, I don't. I don't buy it. I don't see you going in the way of your growth. You know what I mean? You're such in a, you just got to like a very high position. It's like, to, and then, not even that, it takes away, the, the devours pounds of valuable screen time. Mm -hmm. Him saving fucking, him saving her, which is going to see fucking, um, Toby. Uh, Toby McGuire's character, and um, he's, he comes with like fake money, prop money, you know, and then him doing a whole gun chase and releasing the alligator, you know what I mean? To, you know, then he's going and leaving town, it's like, to me, it's like, that's it? He worked his way up just to just vanish just like that? Like, <laughs> to me, that wasn't, like, a justifiable reason, in my opinion. Like, you know, like, I just didn't... It didn't... I didn't, they, didn't, they, they didn't develop the story... They, they, they didn't develop the love story aspect enough to the point no. where that felt justified and that felt... That, it, that felt like it was a big deviation from where the story was supposed to go. Yeah, so. because the love story aspect feels out of place in comparison to everything else. Yeah, and that, that was a big problem. So, for that alone, it ducks off a huge amount of points. Because that ties into the main act, that... That ties to the culmination of the movie. Yeah, and it does. the movie was having a great run, run, and then that third act. I mean, that like not third act, but at the end of the second act into the third act, kind of just. Yeah, a good ending though, but a good final scene. But yeah, no, but other than that, like the climax was. Mm -hmm. Like Brad Pitt had had a great character arc. You know, he I mean? did. Um, he was great. In this you movie. know, what I mean, like he his is for his full circle and a very powerful scene with him and the critic and just going about like you you know you know. You are fading. It's, it has nothing to do with... Yeah, he's doing new movies, doing sound, and people are laughing in the audience. It's not getting good reviews, but it's people don't like it. Not necessarily because he's bad. It's just that it's him. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're fading. You know what I mean? People associate you with the sound area and whatever else. You know, so it's just natural. Like, most of the film stars, none of them really got famous through the fucking no. sound area. So it's like... You know what I mean? So he's, he's basically one of those guys, you know? Um, and he has to deal with, you know, fading into fading out of, of relevance, you know what I mean, doing crap movies, you know what I mean? And, you know, he rather goes out like Kirk, he rather go out like Kirk Cobain, he rather go on a high note than keep descending, you know what I mean? And, but at least he, he, he could sell in the fact that, like, Honey, is for now when everyone's dead, he will still be immortalized through his work. And that played a part in the end scene where we saw Singing in the Rain. We saw mm -hmm. Manny Rogers singing in the Rain, and a lot of what they did in that time frame, they took, you know what I mean, they pretty, pretty much implemented in... Singing in the rain. Yeah, but really, they took a lot of aspects of singing in the rain into yeah. <laughs> into Babylon. But. Yeah, it's like, hey, what if we did singing in the rain, but like played it really raunchy? Yeah, made it, made it like kind of more realistic, more historically accurate to the time frame. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what they did. Yeah, with, um, they really with the did. Babylon. But overall, I still think this was masterfully directed. Overall, yeah. Damon, Damon Chazelle is a powerhouse. He is a great director. Um, some great performances. Maybe some Oscar noms. Who knows? Um. And beautiful cinematography, beautiful sequences, mm -hmm. beautiful one take sequences. But it probably was into cut, but it still looked like beautiful one take messes, like <laughs> a gorgeous mess. You know what I mean? A yes. gorgeous mess in the best possible ways. You know, but this movie did have some narrative issues. You know what I mean? Um, hype, then you know, like it kind of it it it, it, it kind of lost the thread by the end, mm -hmm. and that is a big problem. So that's when we feel the most for me. 
So therefore, I'll probably give it like so. My score for Babylon for for that main reason will be probably like a seventy four. Yeah, you know, I like it. I'll, I'll give it a seventy five. I think that's a fair score for this movie. For fifty five is greasy. I'll give it twenty yeah. points higher. This is tough. Like I'm thinking like. I think like maybe seventy eight. Just because like why are you higher than me? A little. Wow. Because because are, you seem to not like it as much as me. So. Because there were certain parts of the movie that I truly did love. Like I truly love the. Uh, oh, like there were like some great sequences that I'm like that I'm always going to really, remember. Re- re- yeah, it really was man. Yeah, I, I'm giving you like just a couple extra points, not by a lot. Yeah, there these guys are way too fucking. Yeah, harsh, way man. too harsh. Way Watch too this harsh. is the worst. The, the good movies they they fucking something they either either over harsh from movie that doesn't deserve it. Or way too nice to movie that doesn't deserve it. All right, man. So, um, yeah. I've, honestly, I'll say give this a watch. You know, I think this is a very enjoyable experience. And if you work in the film industry or you like films, I think you'll love this. Um, it, t- it does tell a decent story. Only thing it kind of loses thread towards, like, the end of the second act. Yeah. But overall, it's still a good experience. It's still worth the ride. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it's worth a chance. I can definitely see. Not everyone, but everyone would like this. But I think it would, I think a lot of people absolutely would. So I highly recommend giving it a go. Yeah, we definitely rate these fresh. Um... Yeah, um, and with that, guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Mm-hmm. Leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay in tune with more content. Peace. See, See you later, later, folks. We interrupt this program to bring you... Now that's... Is she in there, yo?